Всем привет! I'm Anna Hope and welcome to Feel Russian channel. And in today's video, I decided to show you what I eat in a day being Russian. And I really hope that this video will be helpful to you. You will learn some new recipes or even try to cook some uh, Russian food at home. Home. So, and by the way, if you do it, don't forget to write me about it in the comments down below. And let's get into it! Today for breakfast uh, I decided to cook blini or crepes. That is a very, very typical Russian dish. Uh, many families they cook them uh, for breakfast, but mostly they do it at the weekend. Other people just buy blini somewhere at the supermarket already made and frozen with the different fillings inside. It can be meat or cottage cheese or whatever. But personally I don't love already made food and I don't like like frozen food and I just prefer cooking uh, by myself so honestly saying uh, usually like an everyday basis we do not eat blini of course uh, my husband and I prefer scrambled eggs the way my American friends uh, taught me to cook them but sometimes I cook blini at the weekend so let's pretend today is a Saturday or Sunday and we are going to cook blini together. Today we're gonna cook blini by my mom's recipe and for this we will need milk. I used 2.5% fat, uh, 3 eggs, uh, this is the flour, uh, salt, uh, a little bit of sugar. I use uh, oil and you can use actually oil of oli if you prefer, uh, a bowl for making a dough and uh, I would need a glass. Uh, I will use it as a measure. At first we will cook dough. We will mix three eggs with sugar and a little bit of salt. Then add milk and flour. Mix it properly. Into the dough we'll add some oil and a glass of hot water. It's time to heat a pan and start frying your beautiful blini. As far as blini is a very popular dish in Russia, we have a lot of sayings about them. And one of the sayings is about the first uh, blin. We say, первый блин всегда комом. It means that the first blin is always like lumpy or uh, the first blin is always failed. And sometimes uh, if you try to cook blini, you'll realize that the first one doesn't look uh, perfect. It doesn't look beautiful at all. It really has a lot of lumps. But also we say it then, for example, you tried something new in your life, you try it for the first time, but you didn't get a perfect result. And in order to cheer up a person, you can say, oh, don't worry, the first blin is always wrong, but if you'll try do it again and again, if you'll exercise, you will get the result you want. Usually after I cook the first blin or first like two, three blinners, uh, I'm tasting them in order to understand if, if it's enough salt or sugar or I have to add something. Look how thin it is and how beautiful it is. So in my opinion, it's beautiful. So yeah, let's uh, taste it. And so we'll understand. Mmm, is it perfect? No more sugar. No more salt. It's a perfect recipe. Follow the recipe of my mom. She knows how to cook blini. Look how beautiful this blini is. I have just imagined that this is the hair of the person. This is the head and this is the hair. And the person is a little bit like curly. It looks so nice. Uh, the word blin also has several meanings in our language. Uh, the first meaning you already know. This is the food, uh, it's blin. Oh, one blin, uh, meaning blini. 
uh, we say blini, uh, by the way. But the second meaning, it's a kind of, you know, a curse word. For example, when you do it and you made a mistake uh, and you may say blin, like blin, or <laughs> you're going to the ear at the airport and you forgot your passport, you finally realized it and you can say blin, <laughs> blin. <laughs> So, it, I would say it's a kind of the synonym uh, to American word, but I would say it's not that rude and it can be used um, in everyday life and even um, little children uh, use this word. So, this is just uh, for you to know. But, you know, so many uh, words in our language depends on your expressions, depend on your feelings and emotions. For example, I mean, you can use this word in so many situations like blin or blin, <laughs> oh, like I forgot. So, just for you to know our language tricks. gonna have gonna taste uh, blini I'm gonna eat them with a the sour cream and uh, pink Himalayan salt this is blini and this is my husband who is going to have blini with a condensed milk so this is a very popular Belarusian condensed milk So for lunch today, I'm going to cook a very simple, uh, but at the same time very tasty, and I would say the most Russian grain that you can uh, only imagine. It's called grecha or buckwheat, and believe me, it's so popular in Russia, I swear. Each and every family loves grecha so, so much, and my family is not an exception. Uh, in spite of the fact, uh, the word buckwheat has wheat, uh, it doesn't contain any wheat, and thus it's gluten-free, it's antioxidant, it's uh, high in minerals, and blah, blah, blah. And more than that, it's wonderful and I hope you will love it. By the way, let me know in the comments down below. Do you have buckwheat in a grocery store in your country? So let's cook this uh, Russian lunch together. So what are we gonna need for today's lunch? Of course, it won't be only buckwheat. It will be a buckwheat with a gravy. And we're gonna need a buckwheat. So it looks uh, like this. So we're gonna cook it and then we'll make a gravy. It will be a very simple one. We're gonna need uh, onion. So it depends on you. I will use two. Uh, we're gonna need uh, mushrooms. I use champignons. <laughs> Please let me know in the comments if uh, I pronounce it wrong. So <laughs> I was exercising, but I cannot pronounce the word champignons. So we're going to cook champignons with the onion and sour cream. We also need butter. I use 82 and a half percent fat and we're going to need salt and pepper. So that's it. It's very simple and quick. Let's cook it. Before starting cooking grecha, you have to wash it properly. Usually I put water very approximately, but for your convenience you can have one glass of grecha and two glasses of water. And there is one uh, more way how you can check the level of your water. You can <laughs> put your finger and the water have to cover one uh, phalanx uh, of uh, your finger, like this, this part. So it have to be covered with water. So I checked it and now it's time to cook. While grecia is being cooked, we will make a gravy. I will peel and cut some onions first. Now it's time to fry it a little bit. Now it's high time to cut mushrooms. Our grecia is boiling and we'll add a little bit of salt. 
Let's add mushrooms to the onion and mix them together. Add some salt and pepper. Ooh, it's time for sour cream. Put it on top and only after that mix it together. Meanwhile, Grecia is ready and I always call my husband for the next step. Next step is to add butter and I can't look at the amount he adds. Ooh, magic trick! There is no butter. Butter disappeared from Grecia. So uh, now when the butter um, is melted, we have to uh, mix it properly. And the perfect buckwheat is ready. Mm. Yummy. So our buckwheat with mushroom is uh, ready and I serve it with some herbs, uh, tomato cherry and bell pepper. And it looks like this. I think pretty nice. The perfect thing about this lunch is that it took me only 20 minutes to cook it, including uh, filming this um, video. So hope you like it, hope you will try to cook it. And if you did, please let me know in the comments down below. Enjoy your meal! As a dessert, today we're gonna cook chocolate kalbasku or um, chocolate sausage. I know that the name can sound weird, like a chocolate sausage, but believe me, it's very, very delicious. I got this recipe from my mom and I usually cook this chocolate sausage when I want to uh, treat uh, my husband or guests with something special or when I want to substitute uh, chocolate. The thing is, I cannot find the chocolate that I really love. I know that Russia is famous for um, a good quality chocolate, but I'm still struggling. And instead of searching the cho chocolate, I decided to cook it uh, by myself. And I will just remind you that all the recipes are written in the description box under this video. And as a measure, in Russia we use grams, but um, I will write down the recipe both in grams and in ounces. What are we gonna need for the recipe? First of all, this is a pack of butter, 880 grams and 82.5% fat. Uh, so sugar, uh, we will need uh, two, three teaspoons. Then uh, cocoa, six tablespoons, one egg. Uh, actually for the recipe, we will need milk, but I ran out of milk and I will use cream. And then we will need um, cookies. I just suggest you to use cookies without any extra flavor. So just just a regular one. Plus, uh, we're gonna need some nuts. You can use any nuts, but I prefer walnuts. The quantity also depends on you. The thing is, my husband loves nuts. He adores them. That's why I just uh, try to use a lot of them. So, and then we will need uh, any dry fruits. You can use raisin or dry apricot. I use just uh, cranberry because I prefer the uh, tea, the mix of uh, sweet and sour. And finally, we will need this uh, plastic wrap that will help us to create, create the shape of a sausage. Our first step is to make cookie crumbs. What I mean is we have to um, grate cookies. Uh, you can use a blender um, and because I don't have a blender, I will use a grater. Our next step is to add some uh, cranberries and uh, walnuts into uh, grated cookies. I just washed cranberry and walnuts before, so and then we're gonna add it. A 
Now the base is ready and we're gonna cook chocolate itself. We have to melt butter first and I do it this way. Add cocoa to the melted butter, add some cream, sugar, Delicious! It's time to add one egg and mix everything properly. Now I'm mixing my cooking base with chocolate. Finally we got our dough that looks like this with a lot of nuts and cranberries and we have to form a shape of the sausage and a plastic mm, wrap will help us. I finally formed uh, my chocolate sausage and it will look like this. Or actually you can create any shape you want. When your chocolate sausages are wrapped, they look like this or even better. And now it's time to put them into a freezer for them to get frozen. Um, I put them into the freezer for several hours, like 3-4 hours, but my parents can keep them in uh, the freezer for days or uh, even weeks waiting for the guests or any special occasions. Hello guys! Uh, it's already another day. I have a different hairstyle. You can see a perfect makeup brush uh, in my hair. But it's time to get our chocolate sausage out of the freezer. I'm sick of daydreaming. I just want the feeling. Um, probably you noticed that yesterday we put three chocolate sausage and today i got from the freezer too and it's not a magic trick uh, the things do not disappear from my freezer the thing is my husband was so hungry and he wanted to taste uh, this chocolate sausage that's why he got it out of the freezer yesterday but what we're gonna do what we're gonna do we're gonna take oh no i can't take it so it's completely freezing to the t uh, to the plate so we're gonna take one chocolate sausage and put it into a fridge not to freezer but to the uh, fridge and let it stay there for two three hours in order not to be frozen and ready to eat Let's serve the table now. We will cut our chocolate sausage and put it into a beautiful plate. Friends say that we need some patience. We don't wanna wait no more. Can't take breaks no more. I hope you like the recipes and let me know in the comments which dish are you going to cook for you and your family. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye!